Welcome to section 3 in which we are going to look at the integration between AWS Lambda and the Simple Storage Service. In this section we will first have a quick review of the Simple Storage Service. We are then we're going to look at a demo so we are going to see how to integrate AWS Lambda and the Simple Storage Service. First we are going to use Node.js. So we are going to see what goes into integrating both of these services and then we are going to see a demo using Node.js. We are then going to do the same thing using a different program language and this time we are going to use Java. So let's move on to our first video and that is the quick review on the Simple Storage Service. So first in this video we are going to have a quick review of what exactly the Simple Storage Service is and then we are going to go ahead to the AWS console and create a bucket. So this will be a prerequisite to our next video which we are actually going to see how to integrate the Lambda and the Simple Storage Service. So what is the Simple Storage Service? Well it's used to store objects. It can be used to store objects of virtually any format. So if you want to store a TXT file, if you want to store a picture, if you want to store a video, you can use it using the Simple Storage Service. And this is the popular storage service which is available by AWS for storing your objects. One key thing to remember is that the objects are stored as key value pairs. Just keep a note of this. All of the objects are created inside a container known as a bucket. Now when you look at the API operations available, so you have a bucket, you want to put an object into the bucket. So when you do this, you actually use something known as the put object API operation. Now this can be done via the programming language, it can be done via a command line interface and when you actually use the AWS console to put an object into a bucket in S3, it actually internally uses the put object API. Similarly when you want to actually retrieve the object from the bucket, you will be using the get object API. Now one key thing to note is that when you're actually using the get object, so let's say you have an object, it's a file, it has the name of the file is sample.txt. One important thing to note is that the key, the object key is the name of the file and this will be sample.txt. So keep this in mind, this will be useful to know when we're actually doing our demo on the integration between the S3 and the Lambda service. So remember the file name is the object key. So now let's go on to the AWS console and let's create a bucket which will be used in the next video for the integration between both the services. So here we are in the AWS console. Let's go on to the storage section and go on to S3. Currently I don't have any buckets defined. So let's go ahead and create a bucket. Let's give the bucket name. So I'll name it as AWS Lambda 1, 2, 3. So now remember that the bucket names has to be unique. This is across counts. So we need to ensure that we give a unique name to this bucket. We're going to ensure that this bucket is created in the Tokyo region. We're going to create the Lambda function in the Tokyo region and it's important for both the Lambda function and the S3 bucket to be located in the same region. So let's go ahead and do a quick creation of our bucket. So great, this bucket name has not been taken by anybody else. So now we have our bucket created. 